Hi, welcome to LC. I'm Ayuri Day. We all know the popular V engine configuration because we know the V6, the V8, the V10, and the V12. Well, how many of you know that we do not have V4s in our cars? And which of you know the names of the four cylinder engines that we have in our cars? By the time we're done with this video, we would actually be able to name some of the engine cylinder configurations found in cars we have on the road. This is simply how the cylinders are arranged in the engine. So, the top ones are the top, this is the top view. This is looking at the engines from the top, as you can see the cylinders, the cylinders, the bores actually, looking at them from the top. And this is the side view, looking at the engines from the side. I'm not necessarily saying looking at it from the front or from the side because the engine could be positioned transversely or longitudinally. If you do not understand that, please see my video on engine positioning to understand what I mean by transverse and longitudinal engine positioning. I'll be starting with the most common cylinder, which is the inline engine found in cars we have everywhere. Our Corolla, our Accord, our Civic, our Fusion, our Prado, almost all those cars use the inline engine. In the inline, your cylinders are arranged in a straight line. Looking at it from the side, you only see one piston. The inline is the most common cylinder we have in our cars. Some of the characteristics of the inline engine are, are that it has one engine block, one bank, and one cylinder head covering this, just one cylinder head at the top here, covering this. A lot of manufacturers use this, and the most common is inline four. We also have the inline three used by manufacturers when they're trying to give us the best fuel economy because you know, that's just three cylinders. BMW used the inline three in their i8, although that inline three in the i8 is mounted to an electric motor because the i8 is a performance hybrid. More about that later. We also have the inline five. So manufacturers such as Volvo, VW have used the inline 5 in some of their en engines. We have the inline 6 used by BMW in a lot of their vehicles. Mercedes-Benz have used the inline 6 engine in the past, but they stopped for a while. But in 2017, they reintroduced the inline, en inline 6 engine, known as the M256, used in their new S-Class, the new CLS, even the AMG GT 4-door, the new GLE. Some of the advantages of the inline engine are that it's cheaper to make, it's lighter to manufacture, and it's less complex. Also, due to the fact that it's narrow, it creates space in the engine compartment for other components to fit in there. The disadvantages of the inline engine are that we have limited displacement. Due to its length, having an inline 8 will take up so much space in the car. Although in the past we've used they've used inline 8s. But as far back as the 1950s, the inline 8s were phased out and have been replaced with the V8s. We'll get to that now. So now moving to the second engine cylinder configuration. We have the V. This is the most popular because we all know V6 is V8s. We all know the Vs. So here we have two separate engine banks but still one crank case and they all use one, one crankshaft. So separate engine banks, you can see them here. Separate cylinder heads. Some advantage of the V engine is increased displacement as the engine is more compact, you know. Now instead of having a straight 6 or straight 8, we could have 3 of, on each side or 4 on both sides making the engine shorter and this allows it fit into the engine properly without eating up space for the driver and the front passengers. Some disadvantages are that, you know, due to it, due to it being shorter, it's wider, taking up and taking up so much more space on the sides it's more complex to manufacture more expensive to manufacture than the inline the v engine configuration is so popular that people think they have v4s in their cars but nope you do not have a v4 in your car the v4 has been phased out in automobile manufacturing since as far back as the 1960s and manufacturers stick to the inline 4 because it has more advantages over the v4 although we have what they call cylinder de deactivation so at certain speeds, low speeds or highway cruising, for instance, a V8 engine that has that will deactivate four cylinders and your vehicle will be powered by four cylinders. That is the closest to a V4 that we have nowadays. I'm still yet to see a V6 from BMW, but I know they have the V8. They, they prefer using the inline six, that's BMW. So now to the next engine, we have the VR. The VR is made up of the V, 
and some funny German word not known as Rhein Motto, meaning inline engine in German. The VR was manufactured by Volkswagen as far back as 1991 and has been used in a lot of their vehicles. So here we have the cylinders arranged in one bank. Unlike the V that has two separate banks, the VR has one bank, so one cylinder head covering this bank. But well, here we have two separate cylinder heads. I'm just comparing them so that we can understand that. So looking at it from the side, you see the pistons. They're not touching, they're not scattered, but you know, they're not, the angle, their opposing angle is not wide enough. It's not really wide. They are, they are really close to each other. Some of the advantages are that it's easier to work on since it's just one cylinder head. It's also narrower than the V. So it takes up less space in the engine compartment. As a result, it should also be lighter. Some of the disadvantages are that it's complex to manufacture, complex to work on for those that for um, mechanics that are not or technicians that are not experienced with it. It's found in a lot of vehicles. You know, we have the VR6, the VR8, VR5 used by Volkswagen. Now to the fourth engine arrangement. We have what is known as the flat engine or the boxer engine or the horizontally opposed engine. Let me bring us to the V. It's similar to the V. But here it's a 180 degrees, so it's it's flat. You know, here this one could probably be 90 degrees and all, but now this is 180, so it's flat. Looking at it from the top, we see the piston, the cylinders, looking at it from the top, and this is the crankshaft in the middle. And from the side, we see the piston moving up and down in their cylinders and crankshaft in the middle. This type of engine is found mainly in the Porsches and Subarus. Subarus use this in almost all their vehicles. Porsche uses the 911, the Cayman, and the Boxer. Subarus that use the flat Boxer or horizontally opposed engine are the Impreza, the Legacy, the BRZ, to name a few. Some of the advantages of the horizontally opposed engine is a lower center of gravity. Due to the fact that it's flat, it's, it can be positioned in the lower in the engine bay or engine compartment giving the vehicle a better center of gravity and lateral acceleration. Some of the disadvantages are due to the fact that the cylinders are opposed, it's harder to work on the engine because the cylinder heads are here. So it's harder to get into the engine bay to probably change your spark plugs and do other things with cylinder heads on this side. Did you know that the legendary Volkswagen V2 was powered by a horizontally opposed engine? So now to the fifth engine cylinder configuration which is the W, found in the almighty Bugatti Veyron and Bugatti Chiron. This engine type was manufactured by Volkswagen and it has been used in the Phaeton, the Bentega for the W12. Well here I'm using the W16 to explain this. So here, this is two VR eights coming together to form a W. So two VR eights, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, on both sides coming together to form a W. So some of the advantages are it's compact, you know, 16 cylinders squeezed into one engine bay. Although it's found at the back of the vehicle, compared to having an inline 16 or a V16, increased displacement. 16 cylinders, with this it produces so much power. Volkswagen have been really awesome with this W16 engine configuration. No other company has been able to give us that. So quick recap. Inline engines arranged in a straight line. V engines arranged two separate banks together, one crankshaft. Okay, VR an inline and a V coming together to give us just to give us just one bank, but increased displacement and all. The flat boxer horizontally opposed sideways. Two VRs coming together to form a W. Okay, so I'm sure now when you want to ask for the, for a car. And you ask, does it have a V6 or an inline 4? You won't say, does it have a V6 or a V4? When someone asks you, what car do you drive? You won't say, uh, my car, my engine is a V4. You've learned that already. Thank you for tuning in and stick around for more car knowledge. Also, please do not forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that whenever I post, you'll be informed. And follow me on all our social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, and all the rest. Thank you.